Hey, when does the show start? Hey, wait a minute. <gasps> First, let's hear from our sponsors. Oh, okay. In just a minute. I've upgraded my kitchen and all my bathrooms in my house currently. And I got to tell you, it's one, a great feeling when you kind of get up to date. And two, it totally ups your property value. That's a fact. UCI Kitchen and Bath, let them help you out. Uh, they've been Atlanta's number one cabinet, granite, and quartz fabricator, plus installer for the past 20 years. Servicing all of Georgia, parts of Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. They are a one-stop shop for you. Their UCI Kitchen and Bath, like I said, also provides the installation. If you pop into their showroom, because sometimes when you're doing the kitchen and bath renos, you know, you know, you're not quite sure what you want. You might go online and see some pictures. But if you go into the showroom there for UCI Kitchen and Bath in Norcross, Georgia, they've got displays. You can see exactly the latest trends. Plus, sit down with their design team. Let's save you some cash. Mention the BS, you get 10% off regular priced countertops. So, save some money. Mention the Bailey Show podcast, 10% off regular price countertops uci granite.com that's uci granite.com look do you need a defense attorney go with the best in the business that is aurora law firm you hear manny aurora on the show a couple times a month currently representing anna delvey the real one from the inventing anna netflix documentary located in atlanta georgia but practices nationwide has handled litigation in over 19 different states and has represented many clients uh, in the celebrity field you know uh, as well as professional athletes law enforcement agents lawyers uh, politicians you name it manny and his crew have been there and done that and they can help you as well if you're in need of a defense attorney as a former prosecutor Manny Aurora understands the other side of the case. TheAuroraLawFirm.com. That's the website, TheAuroraLawFirm.com. If you have a question for Manny when he makes a stop with the BS, you can leave a message on our hotline, 404-369-3825. Or the show's social media and get all that information off PodcastTheBS.com. How about a win-win situation for you? You're about to purchase a house. You need a mortgage. Go to the best in the business. That's Dave Flashner with Stockton Mortgage. 561-951-0984. He's a no-nonsense guy. He'll tell it to you how it is. He'll give you the numbers, and it'll make it happen. Plus, he picks up the phone when it rings. But on top of that, when you close your home loan purchase or refinance with Stockton Mortgage, you'll be automatically entered into a mortgage-free sweepstakes. One prize winner will be chosen to have Stockton Mortgage cover their monthly mortgage payment up to $2,500 per month in 2023. 561-951-0984 or Stockton.com slash Dave dash Flashner. With Dr. David Markwell, in Ridgeline Counseling, there's never an excuse to not talk to someone. And we all need somebody in our lives to talk to, especially a neutral third party on some occasions, right? Ten different therapists who work with Dr. David Markwell at Ridgeline Counseling. He's been a huge supporter of the BS podcast, and we appreciate that. He's working with children, adolescents, adults. They offer Spanish-speaking counseling services. And what's so great about Ridgeline Counseling is if maybe you're not in the Georgia area and you can't go to one of the three locations, being East Cobb, Marietta near the square, and McKaysville right outside of Blue Ridge, they do virtual sessions, accept insurance, and offer self-pay options. Dr. David Markwell and Ridgeline Counseling are without a doubt the best in the business, whether it's behavioral health issues like anxiety, depression, relationship issues, parenting issues, trauma, substance use issues, etc. Ridgeline Counseling is there for you. MarkwellTherapy.com. Again, MarkwellTherapy.com. Are you looking to build a mountain home or a cabin in Western North Carolina? You know, you hear me talk about Paradise City all the time and the cabin up in Mineral Bluff. Well, Mac Development Group, they are a one-stop shop for all your needs. A full-service design-build real estate developer, and their team handles everything for you, from your land acquisition to designing your custom home to the general contracting and building. They provide your family with the ability to have a one-stop shop and know what your project is and it's delivered on time. Plus, everything is built in this 3D software process that you can see ahead of time to make you kind of ease your tensions as you move forward with this really cool and exciting thing in your life, right? Currently booking for full-time builds, and they need to get folks on the schedule. The folks are you. Reach out to Mac Development Group, macdevelopment.com. That's macdevelopment.com. Also, hit them up on social media, Instagram and Facebook. People have said it for years. Bailey, you have a black cloud hanging over you all the time. Now... 
There's a podcast to hear those dumbass stories of misery and triumph. Welcome to Bailey's Black Cloud Podcast. All right, here it is, episode 68 of the Black Cloud. My name is Jason Bailey here in the Gold and Scissor Studio, all sponsored by Stockton Mortgage. Do you know when you close your home loan purchase or refinance with Stockton Mortgage, you'll be automatically entered into a mortgage free sweepstakes? That's awesome. One prize winner will be chosen to have Stockton Mortgage cover their monthly mortgage payment up to $2,500 per month in 2023. Plus, Dave the Flash Flashner is just such a great dude. I've done tons of business with him, and so should you. Here's how you get a hold of Dave Flashner, Stockton Mortgage, 561 951 0984. 561 951 0984. Or you can go to Stockton.com slash Dave Flashner. Nate in beautiful Playa del Carmen, Mexico, getting the use of his hands back. I've noticed this because he's starting to do some Photoshop work. And you said the other week that you can't do Photoshop. And I've been thinking about that statement you made. You can't do Photoshop because your hands aren't functioning uh, at 100%. I, I never understood what that meant. Well, I mean, it, you, you've done a little bit of Photoshopping. You got to you use both of your hands. It's not just a click. You, you, you know, expand things and drag them. You have to use both hands at the same time uh, to do most things on Photoshop. Uh, okay. Well, I guess that somebody at your level of Photoshopping, you use both hands. Somebody at my level of Photoshopping, <laughs> I'm good with one hand. So that's why I didn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> that makes all the sense in the world now. So it was very, I like how you gently let me down where you've done a little Photoshopping, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I figured you you had some experience, so you'd know, you could relate. You do, You forget that... When you were still in the womb, I was a webmaster for a major radio company. I was I was changing background colors on web pages uh, by writing HTML, which I was self taught from that yellow and black HTML for dummies book. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's exactly the same. <laughs> Nothing has changed. I, I was using now out of date program software front page putting together different websites, you know, I was FTPing before people were FTP. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when, uh, Brandy used to, uh, or when somebody used to say, Oh, I used to do Brandy's job and, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's changed a little bit. <laughs> There's a little more moving parts, few more, few more things going on now. <laughs> what wonder if that person, right now, like, I remember when I was in 18th place, it's been a long time. Uh, but, uh, it's, or tied for 18th place. Oh my, it's, it's been a long, long time. It's, it's just, <laughs> God, I wonder what they're saying to each other over there today. Uh, there's, uh, Brandon in Noonan, Georgia. Hello there, Brandon. Hey, hello. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good. How are you, buddy? What are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Just drinking some water and looking at our fancy new Twitch account. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We got a Twitch account. Cause so we are going to follow through with uh, the conversation we had the other week with changing up how we deliver the content for the BS. So there's going to be duplicate episodes uploaded each day. And our target date is June 6th. So if you're a subscriber, stay a subscriber. I mean, you two percenters appreciate more than you'll ever know the support. Thank you. Um, but you're going to get commercial free shows. So I know some of you don't care. And some of you just want to do it to support us. I've read all the comments and I, and the, they're, over overwhelmingly sweet um just keep doing what you're doing thank you very much but it's not you that i have to worry about it's getting a bigger audience and a couple people have pointed that out the reason why we're doing this is to get a bigger audience and sometimes the sub uh scares people i mean that's the god's honest truth i get it so after talking with people that do this for a living even though one guy says that i don't know what i'm doing um uh, the the the, this is a good idea. So we're going to do all the episodes released uh, for subs commercial free. And then all the episodes released to everyone. Uh, you'll now be able to listen because Wednesdays have always been free episodes. So you'll be able to listen. They'll have commercials in them. Support our sponsors. Now for the subscribers, we're also going to give you a new Saturday show, which we'll talk about at a later time, which is uh, going to be really cool. I think you're really going to enjoy it. 
and uh, all the other podcasts that that are on the network, like the Clueless Two, and uh, not uh, the only Brandy and Lindsay podcast, and uh, the not your typical tea with Nikki D and Maddie. Those are going to be for subscribers only. And on top of that, going back to what Brandon was saying with the Twitch account, we and Brandon, you're going to have to hold my hand. I think even Nate's hand gently with Nate's, please. Um, the, we're going to do a, a live stream once a month and try to get everybody from the network on. Correct. Yeah, that's the goal. That's, that's the, the plan. Goal. All right. So we're going to get on the Twitch with the kids. Uh, yeah. There, Nate, we're going to, you know, I, I've never, I've never even been on it before, but I'm excited because I know a lot of people that are on it and you can do some really fun things and whatnot. So Brandon has been like harping. It's like, we got to get on Twitch. And I was like, I just want to get on Twitter. No, we've got to get on Twitch. I was like, well, they sound kind of similar. So isn't one okay? No, we've got to be on both. <laughs> okay. That's fine. We'll, we'll, I'll, do, I'll do whatever you want me to do. That's fine. No problem with that. Uh, Black Cloud Podcast sponsored by Ridgeline Counseling. Dr. David Markwell and his therapists are ready to help you with any issues that you might have. You could go to uh, the three Georgia locations if you choose. If not, and I know a lot of you outside of Georgia but still want to get with Dr. David Markwell and Ridgeline Counseling, you can do it virtually, which is great. Just get help. That's all I ask. Get help. Uh, MarkwellTherapy.com. MarkwellTherapy.com. Dot com. So, Black Cloud this week, road rage incident. Uh, my wife has a saying, and she's been saying this for years, that she can't take me anywhere. Now, Nate, you've always said that I don't get out enough. You Well, you you don't think I get out enough. Um, yeah. That's fine. It's your own opinion. I, I, I get out. I, I get out enough. I like to get out when I get out. When I get out, I'm fine with it. I get out <laughs> to play tennis often. I go out to the gym. I'll stop by a store every now and again. Uh, but uh, the, the late night thing is, is, is passed me by. And I don't like to eat out. I don't like to go out to dinner. I'm a weird person when it comes to going out to dinner because I hate seeing a $300 tab. I'm not talking about just a you know, $50 Mexican meal or something. That's fine. We do that every now and again. We, we go out and do those types of things maybe like twice a week, uh, once or twice a week. But I don't like to eat out because, one, portion control. Two, I can cook better. And three, I just like, especially with a fancy night out, dropping all that money is just obscene. It's, it's just silly to me. I just don't, it doesn't make any sense. So that's a lot of the reasons why we don't do dinner and stuff. I've never heard someone say portion control. <laughs> yeah. That, it's, it's, you can still eat out. Just don't eat all your food. If, if, if you think it's too big. <laughs> okay. And, you okay. can't cook better than than most people. They have legit chefs that work there that have been trained how to cook. And uh, I don't know what was your last thing. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let, let, let me let me let me rephrase that then, so all of you simple minds can understand what I'm trying to say here. Is in my opinion, I cook better than everywhere I go. Very rarely will I go to a restaurant and have, let's say, a steak, for example, and say that that steak for that price is better than my steak. This just doesn't happen. You know, I mean, like I go to the, some of the finest steakhouses in the world, Longhorn, <laughs> for example, and I'll go into Longhorn and, and as much as I love Longhorn and I don't mind dropping the diamond Longhorn because they're good people and they, it's, it's the best steakhouse in the world. Uh, but I got to tell you, I'll go head to head with you on a steak. I really would. You know, I cook a pretty damn good steak on the KJ. So, uh, and the portion control thing is what us fat people say, Brandon. And and to Nate's point is like, don't eat it all. Yes, you don't have to eat it all. But then comes in the, I'm paying for it. So I want to eat it while it's hot and it's in the moment. So you stuff yourself. Don't tell me you guys don't do that when you go out to eat. No, you get a to-go box so you can eat it again later. You got two meals in one and you're saving money. Yeah, but you like say you're at a, like a fancy place like Longhorn. You don't get a to-go box at Longhorn. You just oh, yeah, you do. Sometimes. half of your steak, half your mashed potatoes, half your green beans, or what else you get. So then you got half of a meal. And it, it turns into a full meal or okay. a snack later. All right. Well, look, each into their own. Right. <laughs> this is just I, I'm just not a huge fan of going out to dinner. I just not. Uh, I'd rather I'd rather have the experience of cooking at the house. And sitting out on my patio and just enjoying my surroundings. I love my house. So that's my thing. So anyway, my wife, 
says when we do go out, something always happens. Hence why we do the Black Cloud podcast on Wednesdays. And so she's got a saying that when we do go and do things and something happens, as predicted, that she says, I, I can't take you anywhere, which kind of hurts my feelings sometimes because you can take me anywhere. It's just a lot of times when you take me places, things happen, which are never my fault. They just happen. And she'll even attest to that. Most of the time, it's not my fault. I'm just there. Hence the fucking black cloud. Here's another example <laughs> after that all long setup is uh, the, so the, the, this past weekend, there was something called the mimosa festival by our house. I don't know. Nate, when you lived here, did you ever go to the mimosa festival? Uh, I, w- I went to one in a park I- in the city, but it wasn't near your house. What, um, where was this at? On mimosa. Like the street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of curious if that's what it was. That's what it was. was it in like that park right there? Was it like a, a festival festival where I assume there's different mimosa stands and you go around and you try different mimosas. Is it like a beer fest like that? Okay. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Cause I didn't really okay. go. I didn't actually go. Oh, okay. But I said I would go. And that's part of the story. <laughs> we were driving. So early in the morning, um, like we have one of Ariel's friends is, living with us and she's going to for, for a little bit. You got some issues at the house and we're going to take care of her. So, um, so she was going to get some clothes and she has to go the, the other direction of this mimosa festival. So for those not familiar with the area, just play, play along here, the other direction. And it's a suicide lane, which is the dumbest invention ever. Whoever the architecture was for suicide lanes. If you don't know what a suicide lane is, it's one lane, That way, one lane, this way, and then a middle lane that alternates depending on what time of day it is. And most (laughs) of the time, people don't know, and they're going the wrong way, and they get in a head-on collision. So uh, she was going to early in the morning, and I was still at the house, and she goes, oh, we turned around because traffic was so bad. Now, normally traffic's bad, but this was a weekend. I'm like, really? Why is traffic so bad? It was like it was lined up all the way down. I mean, like for miles, there were cars. Oh, really? That's weird. Is there some type of festival in downtown Roswell? She goes, I don't know. I go, okay. So we were going somewhere, all four of us. God, I forget. God, that's how bad my memory is. Um, we were going somewhere. Out to eat? No, we were going. No, we were going. This was, this was Saturday. This was, uh, this was, God, I don't know where we were. No, we were going. We were going anywhere. We we're going somewhere over there. God, I can't remember that. And we're going for a drive. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go see some nice, uh, some pastures out there in rural, rural Atlanta. We we were we were going for a Sunday morning scoot along. <laughs> uh, so I forget where we're going, but we had everybody in my truck, and and we start pulling out, and I just see this traffic. It's crazy. It's nuts. So I'm like, well, fuck this. So I'm gonna go the back way. And so I make some arrangements and some turns and some this and this and that. And, and I go back through our community and, uh, and our community kind of becomes a cutoff for people, which drives me insane. And especially in a situation like this, where in Roswell, which is a quaint, small little town, but it's very cool. You know, it's got a quaint little downtown. It's got a quaint little a green space area and uh, there's different like little festivals that they have with tents and people and stuff. But people come from far and wide just to come to Roswell and just to do this for a day out, especially with the weather being as beautiful as it's been lately in Georgia. Um, So they park in our neighborhood and our neighborhood's very big and it's two different neighborhoods. Uh, There's the older section and then there's our section in the back, which is older, but not as old and not houses are a little bit nicer. And so these cars will just line up on these small, narrow streets. Drives me insane. And so I'm just trying to get back to my house so I can go the back way, so I can go the back way to where we're trying to go so I can skirt all this traffic. And as I'm doing that, there's cars coming from, it's like the the, the intersection, that the stop sign where the intersection was, is like a T. And it's in the residential part of the neighborhood. And and I'm, I'm, at the, I'm in the middle of the T, on the left, there are cars coming, dodging already parked cars, and then I need to go right, and there's cars parked kind of 
one on right side, one on left side, one on right side. You know how people will do that, and you kind of have to mm -hmm. weave in and out of them. So I have to go right. <clears throat> so I, I pull right. And again, remember, I'm in a fairly big truck. You know, I've, I've, I've got a you know big black truck. And so I, I'm, I'm taking a right, and this there, there are these cars that were lined up coming towards me. There was like three cars deep. And in front of me, there were two cars parked. So they weren't moving. So we had to get the cars that were coming towards me. They needed to go first, which is another thing people don't understand. The I go, you go theory makes traffic work and go a lot better when it's like, let him in, you go. Let her in, you go. Let him in, you go. People just don't understand that for whatever reason. No, so, but a zipper method. You know, it, it just drives me insane. I mean, it is absolutely insane. So I'm like, well, this guy's got to pull up. He's not pulling up for whatever reason. He was stopped in front of this house. And it was an older guy, and he had North Carolina plates, and, and, as, and he, there was a, a, uh, an SUV behind him, which I think was probably an Uber, Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's hear from our sponsors. Watkins Law Firm, trial and litigation attorneys. So if it's personal injury, wrongful death, contracts and transactions, landlord and tenant disputes, or just general civil litigation, Watkins Law Firm dot LLC is where you need to go. Get a hold of Tyler Watkins, Watkins Law Firm dot LLC. And here's Tyler's tip of the day. When it's time to buy your car insurance, Make sure you buy added on and not reduced uninsured motorist coverage. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Added on coverage means that when the at fault party's insurance is not enough to cover your injuries, your insurance adds on to their policy. If you use reduced, guess what? You're probably going to be out of luck. Get a hold of Tyler Watkins, Watkins Law Firm. LLC, serving all of Georgia. Next time, talk to Tyler. I really strongly suggest you reach out to Nuberty's Men's Wellness League in Sandy Springs. It's a board-certified medical facility for men and men only. You can schedule your appointment or just schedule a call with a nurse practitioner over there. It's a big schedule button right there on the homepage, menswellnessleague.com. Longevity, that's what it's all about, whether you do testosterone maintenance or medical weight loss or you're having some sexual health issues, pain and joint management. They do it all at Nuberty's Men's Wellness League in Sandy Springs. So $99, the wellness combine, that's going to start your journey. That's $200 off the regular price. This is a limited time offer. Mention that you're a 2 percenter and you listen to the Bailey Show podcast, you're getting an extra 10% off right there. Again, menswellnessleague.com. Schedule your call today, please. With these beautiful days, you're thinking about sitting outside on your deck, but your deck sucks. Well, I got a guy that's going to make it the best that it's ever been. Your dreams come true. That's David Hawks, owner of Rockland Contracting, veteran-owned, established in 2009, specializing in deck design and build. This amazing 3D software will tell you exactly, show you exactly what your deck's going to look like. Also specializes in basement remodel, new HVAC installation, uh, interior and exterior painting, and so much more. Bringing your vision to life. RocklandContractingLLC.com is the website. 678-879-3867. Branding your business is half the battle. And if you're struggling, reach out to Create Graphics today and have them help with your brand. They're a full-service graphics company and specializes in graphic design, wide format printing, and graphic installation. They have a creative approach to take your brand to the next level. That's where we all want to be, us included. With superior quality products, along with excellent customer service, I've been dealing with Create Graphics for years. Ryan Bennett, the owner, is an amazing individual. Uh, and communication. Every project will get a one-on-one -on -one experience from start to finish. Vehicle wraps, corporate events, interior, exterior events, graphic design apparel, serving Metro Atlanta and shipping worldwide. CreateGraphics.net. That's CreateGraphics, G-R-A-P-H-I-X.net. Or you can call 770-369-9962. And back to you, Jason. And then there was another car behind that. And I, obviously I couldn't get around, so I, I, I'm, I pull up and then I pull back and I, and I kind of point to the guy like, hey, can you, you know, nicely, can you pull up a little bit? And he ignores me. I'm like, whoa, okay, <laughs> what the fuck did I do? Like, do you not realize that you're, you're stopping traffic? I was like, what kind of asshole are you? This guy was probably in his, you know, mid to late 60s. 
you know, I'm not trying to be rude, but you know, I first thought I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. He just doesn't know. He just doesn't know. And before this whole thing happened, I've got to say, this is going back to me going out and stuff. We're talking about the Mimosa Festival and we could see people walking across the street and going to the festival and drinking their drinks and eating their food. And that's like, I told Rachel, I go, man, I wish I knew about the Mimosa Festival. I would have loved to have gone to the Mimosa Festival. Who do, I mean, it just sounds fun. What did you do this weekend? I went to the Mimosa Festival. I'd have bought a, I would have bought a t-shirt that says, I survived the Mimosa Festival. That's how much I really would have gone to the Mimosa Festival. She goes, no, you wouldn't have. I said, what are you talking about? No, you wouldn't have. I said, of course I would. Why wouldn't I? It's right across from our house. We could just walk over. She goes, I can't take you to these places. You know things happen. I go, honey, what's going to happen at the Mimosa Festival? It's just, I mean, that just sounds so pure and innocent. And she's like, no, you just, you just it's not your place. And I'm like, fuck you. What do you mean it's not my place? <laughs> like, what, what if I be, what, if, what kind of reputation have I gotten? <laughs> like, this is my own house. This is horrible. So keep that in mind. We're having this conversation as I pull up to the situation on the street. <laughs> and she got, and I, and I, so the, the guy's not, that I'm not pulling up. And I, and, I, and I back up, and then I roll my window down after I tried to point, he wouldn't move. I said, sir, can you please just pull up a little bit so uh, these, these cars can get, uh, get around, and then I can get around because these are parked. He goes, no. Excuse me? No. Just no? No with no, no reason? No. And he, and he just looks down, and he goes back. He's reading a paper. That's how old this guy is. Uh, read a fucking newspaper. In the car. In the car, right? With it on. And I'm like, what do you mean no? And now I'm mad. I'm going to beat this guy's ass. Like, what the fuck are you talking? No. I mean, it's a, like, that's just stupid, rude. That's uncalled for. You're being you're being a dumb, dumb face is what you're being. So, uh, so I said, sir, you have to move up. You can't just stay parked here. Is there, a, are you an Uber? Are you waiting for somebody? He goes, no, I'm waiting for the bride. Excuse me? The bride? He goes, the bride is in that yellow house. And there was a, the, the, the driveway was packed with cars. And at the back of the driveway, there was an SUV whose tail end was kind of sticking out in the road a little bit. And I said, sir, you've got a lot of room to move up where they're going to, you can still be in front of the house, but you're not blocking traffic. He goes, if I move, I'm going to lose my spot. I still don't understand what that means. <laughs> Does anybody else have well, any idea what that means? Well, I guess the spot he was, he was in, he, he's going to lose it. But that's not a spot. It's the road. You don't lose a spot on the road. You lose a spot in a parking garage. You lose a spot in a driveway. You lose a spot in line. But you don't lose a spot when cars are moving on a street. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah I, I, maybe I don't have a good visualization on, on where he is, but you can still lose a spot on a street. You know, like the parallel parking cars alongside, they... If there's an opening, that's a spot. You exactly. Can lose it. That, that's what I, I agree with yeah. you. But he is in the middle. I mean, he is in. He's in the fluid motion of the road. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not a spot. That's exactly. That's not a spot. <laughs> that's, you can't claim a spot on a road that has fluid motion. You can't say that's your spot. That's just not how that works. You know, if you're parked on the side of the road. You've now claimed that as your spot. You can mark your flag, scream out freedom, wear your skirt, and be William Wallace all you want. That's a spot. This is not a spot. So, uh, so I'm like, sir, what spot are you talking about? And he says, uh, there's, a, there, there's a brine in there. Yeah, there's a brine in there. And I got to take, he's like, I got to take her to the wedding. I'm like, okay, great. Can you please just move up? No. So I'm like, fuck. So I like pull I pull up and I'm talking to this SUV and I'm thinking maybe they'll all back up, possibly. Cause if they back up, because I can't back up now, but if they, they could back up, then because this guy's just being an asshole. I'm like, no, fuck this. Hold on. And I'm talking to the people in the SUV, they're younger people, and I was like, hold on, no, fuck this. So I pull back and I say, Look, dude, you got to move. This is ridiculous. Just move up five yards. That's all you got to do. Do you not see that there are cars behind you? 
Do you not see that you're backing up all this traffic? You can't stay parked here. I don't give a fuck if it's a wedding or not, dude. you got to move. And he gets frustrated, and he gets frustrated. We go back and forth a little bit. You know, people are honking now. People are walking to the Mimosa Festival. I'm probably ruining their day because I'm using profanity out loud. And, you know, and it's, it's a thing. And so finally he moves up, and I get around and go home. Can you imagine what my wife said to me afterwards as soon as this was done? Can't take you anywhere. Can't take you anywhere. Yeah. We were (laughs) just having that conversation. And I said, well, we didn't technically go to the Mimosa Festival. So maybe if we would have went to the Mimosa Festival, this would have not have happened. She was like, no, it would have been worse. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the parking thing wouldn't have happened because you could have walked there. So that would have solved that. You'd have been fine. But something else would have taken its place is what she's saying. You know, yeah, uh, probably just because I thought of going the, of going to the Mimosa Festival, this had to happen. You know, <laughs> and every time, you know, I don't get in my many road rage situations because I don't drive <laughs> really anywhere. So, uh, and when I'm on the interstate, I, I I drive like a grandmother, so I have no problems there. But uh, the 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 guy just was so hell bent on not moving. And he angered me so much because he was being such a dick. And now every time a situation like that happens, um, Rach, you know, tries to calm me down because that fucking movie you had us watch freaked her out. Um, what's the one with uh, Russell Crowe? The, uh, the Unbreakable? Was that it? Unbreakable? The Road, oh. Ra- the road Rage movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't have you watch it. You, you told us about it. Oh, I thought you had, you told me about him. No, that was no, the you, one that Nate debunked. He's like, I would have called the cops 30 minutes in the movie. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the movie would have ended. It would have been like, all right, well, fucking move five feet. And the movie's over. Sorry, Russell Crowe. <laughs> that, that, that movie is to people that get into road rage incidents present day as to what Jaws was to people in the 80s that were going to the beach. <laughs> it just scares the living daylights out of you, knowing that somebody could flip out. Because, I mean, you see stories like that. This old guy could have just pulled out his musket and, you know, from the Civil War era and just start to start taking shots at my car because he was so angry. People have, like, no... Uh, scared or fear of going to jail or repercussions or nothing anymore. You know, it's that's why I don't like to get into those altercations with the guy who's being a dick and he needed to be held accountable. So guess, yeah, no, I agree that. in that, in that situation for sure. I probably would have just honked my horn, just lay on it. Cause eventually it, it draws attention. Cause everybody's like, what's that noise? And then the person starts getting embarrassed. So they're like, Oh fuck, I got to get out of this situation. Cause everybody's looking at me cause uh, everyone's honking their horn at me. So I just laid on it until he moved. I, I got a feeling that wouldn't have worked. There wasn't enough, there wasn't enough, there weren't enough people around us. And he looked like a guy that just didn't give a fuck. Like, like I had to kind of ration with him and be a little angry, strong arm, you know? Yeah. I think you did the right thing, but that, I'm just saying that's how I would have done it. But I think, yeah, even though there weren't people around, once you honk your horn long enough, all the neighbors are going to start coming out. Probably the bridal party is going to be like, what the fuck? Oh shit. Our, our <laughs> ride is blocking the entire road. And maybe the bride would have came out and said something to this old asshole. I've all, you know what I've always wanted to do is like people like that get out of my car, go up to their window, headbutt their window, break it, and I just have blood running down my face, and then calmly say, "Can you please move up?" And then get back yeah. in the car. That's <laughs> tough. We used to do that in high school. We used to break windows with our head and our hands, you know, just because we were tough guys and we thought that was cool. That's it, you know, you can hit a windshield properly with your head. You don't mess up your head all that much. You just get some blood going, and you can pop the windshield. That's a special somebody. That's badass. Somebody does that to your window, you'll do whatever they say. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. You. Or you kick out their their tail light and be like, hey, got tail light out. You might not need to go get that fixed. <laughs> yeah, you should be <laughs> on your way to the tail light repair store right now instead of waiting for the bride. Why? Because you got a tail light out. <laughs> <laughs> Tough guy. Tough guy. So that's my bl- that's my black cloud. You can't take me anywhere. I get an altercation. Um Wherever I go. And it's not my fault. Would we agree that's not my fault? I did nothing wrong? Yes? No, yeah, that's not your fault. I don't even think it's like you. That's just shit that happens in traffic. So I wouldn't feel too bad. I don't think you caused that with your bad luck. I just think that's just shitty luck in general. 
No, I, I don't. I don't really have too many uh, shitty traffic. Like I get angry. There's two things that bother me when it comes to traffic. One, uh, and this is more lately. One always, but one of them lately is now that my daughter drives and all of her friends drive. We've got tons of cars at our house. I don't like houses with a bunch of cars. I think it looks trashy. I definitely don't like cars uh, on the side of the road. It just looks trashy. So I've got these cars. I got tons of cars in my house, which is fine. You know, that, that's what you get as a parent. You got a teenager. It's it's part of the process. You got to live with it. But we have a fire hydrant in front of our house. Like it splits me and my neighbor. And they always park in front of the fire hydrant. And I'm like, don't you guys realize it's illegal to park in front of a fire hydrant? They don't know that. They never were taught that. And they still do it. And I have to tell them every time, move your fucking car. You can't park in front of the fucking fire hydrant. <laughs> I got to explain it to them every time. And I was like, and if you can't remember not to park in front of a fire hydrant, what else are you forgetting? And yeah. I don't I don't want my daughter in your car if you can't remember that. You know? Yeah. And then the second thing is people that turn and don't stay in their turn lane and they cut across traffic. That is probably, I don't know the statistic, but I would guess it's probably one of the top five or top 10 reasons people get into accidents. Maybe not big accidents, but accidents is that when you turn, you just jet across. And I see kids doing this all, I see grownups doing it all the time. That is illegal. You cannot do that. That is against the law. I wish law enforcement would ticket heavily people that do that. Drives me insane. Brandon looks like a guy that would do something like that. He looks like a a wide turn lane or guyer. No, I mean, there are, there are some times when I, I have to turn in the turn lanes and I'm like, Oh shit. Interstate's over there. I'm just going to have to take my chances and dart across. Yeah. No, we can't do that. You gotta, is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about when you like get turn, like, let's say you're turning, somebody's turning in an intersection and they're supposed to stay in their own lane, but then they drift into like, three other lanes across, you know, that, that drives me crazy. Yeah. Same thing. Well, that's illegal. Like when you turn, you have to spend a certain amount of time in your turn lane um, until it's safe to go to the next lane. And that could yeah. be in a couple seconds. That could be in a couple minutes, you know, whatever, but you don't, as you're turning, go into the far left lane. That's illegal. And, and that's when you get into accidents because you've got people most likely turning from the other side of the intersection that, you know, and then when they cut over too, so now you're going to meet in the middle. Uh, that's kind of how I got in my accident. That dumbass girl that was following the lines on her navigation instead of looking at the road. She's <laughs> like a video game. 18 year old Asian girl, like fucking playing a video game on her phone. Oh, the blue line said to cross over. No, look at the fucking road. You dumb bitch. You don't look at the lines on your phone. <laughs> what are you? An idiot. You <laughs> stupid head, just stupid head. And it calls me all kinds of issues. All right. Uh, that's the black cloud for this week. We thank you for listening. We appreciate the continued support. Uh, bear with us, you know, as we uh, make some changes. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. I mean, you're still, you know, for the subscribers, you're getting more, right? You know, when I know a lot of you are like, I don't mind the commercials. If you don't mind the commercials, you can listen to the commercial filled ones. You know, it's up to you. You'll have carte blanche over everything we do. Um, you'll also... I forgot to mention, you know, we usually do a big giveaway monthly. I know last month we did not. Uh, but for the launch of this, Atlanta Grill Company has given us something to give to the two percenters, the subscribers, um, as we make this this change that you're going to love. Just the option to, to, to win it. It's cool. I've got one of them, and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So we'll tell you about that as we get closer uh, to June sixth, right? The day before my birthday. That's the that's the target day. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, I'm gonna say, and uh, you, if you remain a subscriber, you'll continue to have access to to everything in the past. If if you uh, you know want to go back and listen to a show from a month ago, you'll still have that. So that, that's a benefit there. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah, really good point. Also, we're going to do some and you have to bear with us on this but uh for subscribers we'll be doing extra special things monthly whether it's giveaways the big giveaway uh smaller giveaways 
but we're looking to do some like private get togethers for the subs. Um, and that, just that's in the works so just there's there's a lot of cool things because i understand there has to be always has to be over the top more for the subscriber because for some reason certain people think that 4.99 a month is like five thousand dollars a month like i'm asking for your mortgage i really am not <laughs> i really really not. there's a there's a guy that writes a radio column right there's a, and, and he like he dishes the dirt and he gives his opinion and I've never met the guy. He's a good writer. You know, I've read his stuff before. He's very well known in the business. I don't know him. I just know of him. And he'll like dish the dirt on things and, you know, who's getting in trouble and who's he's like the TMZ of radio nerds, right? This dude asks people to pay ten dollars a month to read his newsletter. When I see yeah. that, I'm like, we're asking four ninety nine to give seven days of new fresh content plus three other podcasts on top of our podcast. You've got to be fucking kidding me. You know, and to the one guy that was going back and forth with me, he wasn't being a dick. I just didn't think he had any place to say what he said, but that's yeah. fine. It's a free world. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. And that's fine. You know, it's the internet. You, you can do whatever you want. But but he he's not taking into consider. He's like comparing us to famous comedians that do one podcast a week for like 30 or 60 minutes. He's not realizing that because he doesn't listen. He doesn't. Have, he's not a subscriber, so he doesn't realize how much work we put into this. You know, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't hear the imaging. He doesn't hear the editing. He doesn't hear the guest lineup. He doesn't hear any of that stuff. You know, he just looks at it from that angle, which he's completely and totally wrong. So, well, and he's almost the that um, now the podcast nerds are coming out, you know, because he's like, yeah, that's not how podcasting works. Like they like fucking like he even knows. But the, the thing that like when we started, I told you where you were that you were asking, you know, how long do I do this? Like, what are we talking about? It, the great thing with podcasting is there are no rules. There is no right way to do it. You can have a 10 minute podcast. You can have a three hour be subscription, non, you know, you can have guests. It can be by yourself. There isn't a thing for podcasts. You can do whatever you want. Podcasting has become what radio used to be. And even now, podcasting, there are radio people dipping their toe into this world, trying to micromanage how people podcast. And I agree that, and, and it's tough for me because I'm so radio trained and I, and I buy into the science of the art, even though the art should be overshadowing the science, but there is a science to everything. And, I've always leaned on Nate to, to keep me slow and steady on this podcast thing because I'll get to radio and I'll be like, well, you know, well, and I probably still am to radio, you know, with a lot of the imaging and the bells and the whistles and stuff, but that's just what I like. You know, I like the big goofy imaging stuff. I like the, that's why I was always a Letterman fan because he had that over the top, old school kind of vibe, you know, and the payoff was so simplistic. Name your cut of meat. It's like, will it sink? That's brilliant. You take the most simplistic thing, but you have the biggest buildup to it. I think that's funny. So that's just my brand of humor. That's my brand of entertainment. If you like it, great. I hope you do. Over the years, a lot of people have. If you don't, that's fine. Move on. Find somewhere else to get your entertainment. I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. I really do. Um, but you're right, Nate. And that's one thing that I've learned is there's not really a right or wrong way to do this. There's just not. No. You know, so. And, yeah, and there's not like one that's, I mean, yeah, there's different successful ways, but you can do something one way and be successful. You can do it another way and be successful. There's not like a, a cookie cutter kind of thing that everybody should follow. You can kind of just do whatever you want. And a lot of things, a lot of times things just hit and they're great. So, so people will in the radio world, in the podcast world, for, well, they'll, they'll say, they'll say, well, that's successful. That's the way it's supposed to be because that's successful. Take Joe Rogan, for example, mm. you can get somebody, I could mimic Joe Rogan. Um, I could interview the same people he interviews and ask the same questions. I mean, there's nothing riveting or over the top compelling that he's doing. It's just how he does it. It's Joe Rogan that makes Joe Rogan success and nobody else can be Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan. 
And that's the exclusivity that personalities have. And, you know, right place, right time. You know, you could say that for anybody that's had success and they'll tell you that they didn't get there on their own. Howard, you know, for years, people would try to rip off Howard's gimmick, Uh, the lesbians, the chicks, the sex stuff and blah, blah, blah. And it worked for people. But you were always the watered down Howard Stern. If you did any of those things, me included, I got wrapped up in it, you know, because that was the type of radio you did in the 90s. It was sex stuff. It was. Um, you know, boobs, and I did a thing called Muff Madden. I mean, we, we did all kinds of stupid shit. You know, it was like, it was just dumb, you know, but it was funny at the time. Uh, now, I mean, there's stuff that, like, on Saturday's Way JB Back Moments, I can't even play. <laughs> I go back and I listen to it. I'm like, I can't play that. If, if somebody hears that, they're not going to understand that it was done in 20 or 2008, 2007. You know, yeah. Just not Radio is an Adam Sandler movie. It was funny at the time, but now it's like, eh, didn't age well. <laughs> you are correct. You are absolutely correct. That, that's a that's a good uh, comparison right there. So, you know, when it comes to the, the podcasting, you just be you. And, and same with radio. And, and that's the problem with radio is there's too many nerds behind the scenes, the power players that are telling personalities what they need to be like because they never were able to be the person they want it to be. Instead, they became the boss. So if you can't do it, become the boss. That's kind of a rule of thumb. If you, if you, if you're not, and then if you're a good boss in which I've had plenty of them, they'll know their place. My place is to manage you. Your place is to put on a show. When your show starts to fail, I'll come and talk to you. You know, now if you're a young talent, they're going to coach you. Um, That's good. But you know, you get people that, want to be something that they're not and, 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 and they fail. I mean, we're seeing that we've talked about at the beginning of the show right now. <laughs> it's like, God, how do you explain 18th tied? Not even, not even in 18th place, you're tied 18th place and your morning show is getting beat by a radio straight by a radio station stream. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been beat by a stream. I have, I have a signal and you're being beat, not by the radio station, but you're being beat by the radio station stream. So you have the frequency and then you have the dot com. There are more people listening to the dot com than they are your morning show right now. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I might be a lot of things, but a loser is not one of them. So you might say I'm a loser because I'm not getting a paycheck, but I'll tell you right now, I never had those ratings <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> never since whenever I was at that station, I had those ratings ever. Um, oh, that's not true. I did when I first started, when we first started, we we're 22nd place. And then within six months, I took us to the top three. So that's a success story. Maybe they'll do the same. I hope so. I really do. Wish them nothing but the best. Podcast, the BS.com, all of our social media. Uh, Brandon, you're going to have to get with Nate to add the Twitch to the podcast, the BS.com. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm sure he can do that easily. Uh, follow us, uh, like us, share us, uh, subscribe to us on the YouTube, on the Twitter, on the Facebook, ask to be a part of the two percenters private Facebook group. We had an influx of people lately, which is cool. Welcome aboard. Uh, we've uh, said the Twitter, I think, right? The TikTok. we're big on the TikTok. kids love us on the TikTok. I don't know why, but they do. They love us on the TikTok. Uh, with that said, anything else, Nate, you got anything? Life hack, if you honk your horn long enough, you'll meet all your neighbors. <laughs> Brandon. Keep a PD share in your pocket for old men parking the road. There you go. All right. Thanks for listening to yourself. Great, safe rest. Of- hey, back. Get off my lawn. It's old man Kevin, and the BS is done for right now. Please share, like, and support. Podcastthebs.com. It's better than radio. Now. Get out of here. And Bailey's Black Cloud Podcast, always sponsored by our good buddy, Dr. David Markwell with Ridgeline Counseling. He's got his therapist ready to help you with any issues you have, whether uh, you're going to his three Georgia locations or you might not even be in Georgia. That's fine. He can do it virtually. And uh, I've talked to Dr. Uh, Dr. David Markwell, and he's he's a helper. I'll tell you that right now. MarkwellTherapy.com. MarkwellTherapy.com. Son of a bitch. I just called to say you should subscribe to The Bailey Show and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Nobody is going to save you now. If you like what you hear then get a full 7 days a week plus of new content by subscribing. 
podcast the BS.com. It's better than radio.